a warm welcome from my side as well to today's uh, webinar about secure author authorization with OAuth 2, um, where I'm going to introduce this great new feature OAuth 2 in OwnCloud. So to start, um, first some words on my person. Um, my name is Dick Meyer, and I work as a product manager at OwnCloud. So I'm involved um, yeah, in all topics around product design and strategy, as well as product marketing. Um, if you want to summarize it in one sentence, uh, I speak with customers and yeah, make sure that our products meet their needs. So what do we want to talk about today? <clears throat> At first, I want to give a short introduction uh, on OAuth in general. Then I'm going to switch over to um, yeah, the OAuth uh, implementation in OwnCloud and its benefits. After that, I will give a live demonstration on how you connect and disconnect OwnCloud clients in a secure way using OAuth. And yeah, later, I also want to give a short outlook on the future of access control. So yeah, what is OAuth? Um, in general, OAuth is uh, an open industry standard protocol for web API authorization. <clears throat> so this is used to grant uh, websites or applications access to protected resources on other app websites, but without giving them uh, the user passwords. So basically, this is a standard interface that is used by many large internet platforms. Um, for example, maybe you notice when you can log into forums or similar using your Twitter account. The exchange regarding account data uh, is conducted via OAuth, for instance. So <clears throat> a little view on a technical side. This schema um, provides um, yeah, details on the authorization flow uh, using the example of OwnCloud. But um, yeah, clients on the left and server on the right may also be exchanged with other applications as the flow is identical. identical. Um, yeah. All in all, uh, a client issues an authorization request. The user logs in. And after exchanging authorization codes, the client receives a unique access token that um, simplifying can also be seen as a separate password explicitly for this client. So now I'll switch over to the OwnCloud use case. Um, first of all, um, the uh, OAuth implementation in OwnCloud was initiated by a community project by a student group uh, called Skibo at LearnWeb. Um, for your information, Skibo is one of the largest OwnCloud installations in the educational sector with uh, several thousands of users at German universities um, under the lead of the University of Münster. So this all started as a university project. Students came together with the goal to uh, connect their own cloud with the Moodle learning platform. Um, the goal was uh, to make files that are in own cloud available in Moodle for further use, but without having to store user passwords in Moodle. So the result of this project is an OwnCloud app or extension, um, which was later on taken over by the OwnCloud engineers and professionalized and yeah, released to our marketplace. <clears throat> so this is how, we, how it all started. Uh, on cloud, uh, in OnCloud, OAuth is primarily used to connect clients in a secure way. And this provides many benefits. So clients, as I said before, do not need to store passwords. So um, previously, clients um, stored passwords. They didn't do this in plain text, so they used key rings uh, of the respective operating systems. Um, with OAuth, now clients don't even get to see the user passwords anymore. 
In addition, um, the client-specific access tokens can also be revoked. So in case of theft or loss of a device, a user can um, easily use the web interface to uh, disconnect this specific client. And yeah, also the integration of identity management solutions is highly facilitated. So <clears throat> taking the example of um, SAML single sign on, this um, in the past needed to be conducted by the clients themselves. Now with OAuth, uh, we just need server-side implementations for future support of other services like CAS or Kerberos, and clients are authorized independently via OAuth 2. <clears throat> and last but not least, um, the OAuth integration also provides a user authorization interface for developers, which means um, when third-party developers want to integrate on cloud, in other applications, they now have an interface for secure user authorization. So this will provide an incentive for future integrations and will also make integrations more secure, all in all strengthening the on-cloud ecosystem. At this point, we are already um, approaching the live demo and yeah, some uh, words before you, of course, have some prerequisites to use uh, OAuth in OnCloud. <clears throat> First of all, you need an OnCloud 10 server with the uh, OAuth app installed and enabled. You can get the app from the OnCloud marketplace. And yeah, of course, you also need to use clients with OAuth support. So in our example, um, we will use the OnCloud desktop client 240, which is about to be released. Of course, uh, OAuth will also be usable uh, with the Android and iOS clients. So now I want to show how to connect the OnCloud clients securely and also how you disconnect a specific client. For that, I share my screen. So. I hope you can see everything. So this is OnCloud Client 240, as mentioned, um, just uh, with a plain install, nothing configured yet. And I just enter the address of my demo instance and click on Next. And what happens now? is that my browser opens a new window um, and uh, there's a small hint here that the application desktop client is requesting access to my account. And yeah, to be able to authorize it, I of course have to log in first, enter my credentials and log in. And next, when it's loaded, yeah, I have the request that the desktop client would like to access my account, get a little hint that uh, this access uh, will allow to manage files, folders, and shares. And then when I click on the Authorize button, in the background, the token exchange happens. And as you see, my client is connected. I can uh, use Selective Sync to choose what I want to sync. For now, I leave it as, as it is, click on OK, and just connect it. So I'm ready, set, and the client is operating. That's it, basically, to connect a client. Um, next thing I want to show is in case my device gets stolen or lost or anything else, um, I am now able to disconnect that device. So for that, I just browse on the web UI and log in there. An error. One second. Now it should work. Yes. Great. So I'm just logged in as a user, regular user without uh, admin privileges, and navigate to my user settings. Now I go to the security section of settings, 
And yeah, here I see an, a, a separate section for OAuth listing my authorized applications. So for example, I also connected an Android client, which you see here. And this is the desktop client I just connected. So if I now want to revoke access, I just click on the trash bin icon and get asked if I really want to do this. Say OK. And switch back to the client. So now that the client does not have access anymore, and yeah, he takes some seconds uh, to notice that, and now it just asks again to authorize it since I'm still locked in here. But basically, the access is revoked until I authorize it again. So that's how easy it is. It, yeah. And so far on the live demo, I'm going to unshare my screen again. This works, yes. Great. So we're back with the presentation. And yeah, for the mentioned benefits, OAuth is the new standard mechanism to connect own cloud clients. And therefore, we recommend all administrators to install this extension and make their users' experience more secure. Coming to the last section of the webinar, I want to um, express, uh, go a little bit further on what OAuth provides or will provide in the future. At first, um, we want to give administrators control over the connected devices so that they can see on the first hand which devices are registered and also provide the ability to selectively disconnect devices. For example, an admin could say, um, we don't use IOS devices. If there are IOS devices uh, registered with my own cloud, I can just disconnect them in one click. Also, um, OAuth 2 scopes allow device-specific access controls. So as you have a unique and separated access for each client, you can define access levels within an own cloud account for each client. This makes it possible to realize use cases like, for example, read-only devices um, or also device-specific folder permissions. For example, if I don't want Moodle in this case to be able to access my whole own cloud, I can just define specific folders that are accessible with specific clients. Um, yeah, that's it. And there will be uh, many more use cases coming up um, where own cloud will help to comply with corporate guidelines using OAuth 2. So far from my side, um, are there questions in the audience? So far, there are no questions. But yeah, now is time. If you have something in mind you would like to know about this topic, just don't be shy. Come up with a question. So yeah, there's no question. Oh yeah, there's one question in the chat by Frederick, and he's asking if it works with uh, OnCloud Server version nine. And I have to say no. Um, OAuth is uh, limited to OnCloud ten and future versions of OnCloud. Next question by Evgeny. Um, is there any limitation of OAuth usage in non-enterprise version? Um, yeah, the answer is quite no. Um, OAuth is released 
under AGPO v3 to the marketplace. So it's free to use for everybody. Next question by Philippe uh, regarding integration with Google Authenticator. Um, this probably goes in the direction of two-factor authentication. And yes, this should basically work because you just use the second factor when, um, when logging in. And yeah, you can do that as you're used to and uh, the token exchange will happen afterwards. And another question by Petty. When will the OAuth enabled desktop client be released? So yeah, that's a question regarding uh, desktop client 240, which is currently in beta phase. And yeah, it's always hard to give exact release dates for software. So we're aiming to get it released in the next two weeks, I'd say. Depends, of course, on the feedback we get on the beta release. So, all questions answered that I can see in the chat. I think, yeah, I hope we answered everything and would make a cut here. Um, also, we have more resources like a detailed blog post, a YouTube video, and of course, administrator documentation on installing and using OAuth. We will link this uh, in the webinar des description afterwards. So yeah, thank you all for listening. Um, if you need more information, you can just go to oncloud.com or write us an email, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and yeah, so far, I wish you a nice day, and thank you again. See you.